All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Collection Reflection. I am your host, Tim Williams, and joining us once again, the uh, editor, or I'm sorry, the producer and director of Comic Spear and Sci-Fi, uh, Pure Brews America, I'm trying to remember them all, and uh, among others, but... Uh, You'll, you can tell us some of the other ones. That, oh, that too many right to too many to mention. <laughs> too many to mention. But uh, Tim, it's always a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me back once again. Thanks. I guess I didn't do too bad last time. You did. You did not. And as, okay, a, good. as a matter of fact, um, I I neglected my duties as host last time, and uh, I wanted to to make it up to you since this is uh, actually the second time you're on here. Normally, we present our our guests with uh, a, a gift or our co-host, our fill-in co-host, as as it were. So, um, now, last time you mentioned that you are a big Iron Man fan. So, while I was going through stuff of my own to find for the upcoming segment of what you got, I uh, I came across uh, this here, Iron Man number two twenty three. I'm not sure oh. what. Uh, not sure what kind of conditions it's in. It, it's in very good. It says, Looks good but from here. Uh, so uh, just uh, as, you know, we got a micro budget here. So uh, <laughs> well, I appreciate is, it. That's awesome. Yeah, no problem. Well, uh, we appreciate you know, this you is up. right around the time I think that I stopped reading Iron Man. So I may I say or may was, not have this one. So this would be a nice addition to my collection. I want to say that was uh, around eighty-seven. I think I looked it up. I think it said it came out in, in 87. Okay, so yeah, so. that was right on the edge. I think when I started high school is when I, you know, I didn't stop per se, but I just kind of got into other things and kind of drifted away from comics. And then right. once I got out of college, I kind of circled back around to it again. So yeah, yeah I'm going to definitely... Uh, I think a lot of people check this out and i was just this weekend talking about uh, all the gaps in my iron man collection and so i want to go through and kind of write down all the missing issues oh okay. at, at least up to kind of where i fell off yeah and try to complete the the collection you know okay um and so yeah this would be perfect i, I appreciate it yeah thank you no, very no much problem. Well, we appreciate you uh filling in once again uh, like I mentioned, we are going to be getting into the segment, What You Got. And uh, did you bring anything? I did. I did. <laughs> okay. I, I, I forgot I, to ask you that before the show. Uh, I, I brought but... two things kind of like before, just because I'm always so indecisive. So I brought a new thing, okay. my most recent purchase, and then I, bought some, I brought something that uh, maybe once we bring on the guest, it's okay. kind of guest related. So Okay. Um, uh, all right. Yeah, if you want to. It, it, Want to show us? I brought Taking Shape 2, the Lost Halloween sequels. Oh, right. So I, I read uh, the original Taking Shape, and it kind of just went through all the, the the Halloween movies, and it was really good. I, like, tore through it, you know, okay. which seemed like in a couple of days. And then I read that they made a, uh, a sequel book uh, about all of the – sequels for Halloween that were never made. So essentially if there was a script written for it and it was considered uh, by the producers, then they included it in this book. Um, And so it's kind of a thick book because obviously it's a lot easier to write a script than to produce a movie. Let me just show it on this, this camera. I think it shows up a little bit better here, but uh, all right. So that is cool. Um, Now, now I have read over the years that the original concept for Halloween was going to be what we got in Halloween three and not necessarily Michael Myers, but different, at least after Halloween two, that we were going to get different stories like, well, like that's anthology what, stories. Yep. That's what John Carpenter wanted to do. He wanted to, uh, from three on just every year, do a different Halloween related or inspired horror movie but unfortunately, Halloween three did so poorly at the box office and critics and even fans trashed it because it was marketed as a direct sequel right. to, uh, you know, the first Halloween movies. Right. And had they, I think, 
presented it as just season of the witch. Yeah. Uh, I think it would have done a lot better because now it's kind of become this big cult movie. Right. Uh, even though I still don't think it's a great movie, but it's uh, not, it's not great, but I do like, it. I mean, it's better than a lot of horror movies out there that I've seen. So, I mean, it's got, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis is in it, right? Uh, or, n- no. Uh, what am I thinking? Who is the guy? Uh, Tom Atkins. Tom Atkins. Thank you. Who's, well, who's I, great. I, I can't believe I, mean, I was like, drawing a blank on the legend <laughs> Tom Atkins because yeah, he is great. I mean, he's he's not, but he is. Like, yeah. Well, uh, I mean, especially like the way that they used him back then, because like you know he's getting all the women and I mean, yeah, it's, he was it's like the, the macho guy, man, you know, of right. the and he the doesn't really mid eighties. He doesn't really fit that 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 casting really well. Maybe more so back then you could get away with it, but nowadays. Well, because with all the action movies, all the real manly men were like buff Arnold Schwarzenegger, Stallone type guys, whereas he is definitely not that. He's drinking, smoking, right? A little little, cheesy mustache. (laughs) Yeah, uh, (laughs) right. But but he's awesome. He's a legend. Absolutely, (laughs) absolutely. So yeah, this is a really fun book if you're a fan of the Halloween movies. Then. First, retaking shape, and then I think you'll enjoy that one so much you want to keep it going and All and right, retaking cool. shape too. So I'm I'm still early on. Right. Uh, I think they're only on. Is that pretty new then? I think this one's relatively new because they in the foreword they talk about the two upcoming Halloween sequels. I think it's Halloween Kills and Halloween but, Ends. Okay, so it, so it takes us all the way up to the last Halloween. I'm with, pretty uh, sure, yeah. With Jamie Lee Curtis. Yep, okay. yep. So it's it's pretty pretty brand new. Okay. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you, Denver, for showing us that. Um, what do you got? Am I? So I I mean I do have because because of our guest this week I have collected some diecast things over the years. Um, but uh, but I don't I don't have a, a ton of it, and and this is not really necessarily diecast, but they do uh, make vehicles. Um, they make really high end um, Star Trek for one, but they make Battlestar Galactica too. But uh, so it's it's the company's Eagle Moss, and what they do. So this is the Scimitar from uh, Star Trek Nemesis, and it is not actually. It's not actually diecast, though. I mean, I think there might be like a little. I think this part's probably diecast, but it's it's kind of light. Well, but um, what is the this company a definition of diecast? Because I wasn't even sure. My, does it have to be metal of some form? Uh, you know, I'm not really sure. On okay, that one. so my, that'll myself, we'll save that one for I, Joe then. That's what I'm assuming, but I could be wrong. But uh, so these Eagle Moss uh, ships are are amazing, and they they come with. So they're they're actually made. From the uh, computer blueprints for um, the ships, and they, and they, I mean they've made a ton of Star Trek ships, and I mean I only have this one and maybe like one, one or two others, and I've sold like quite a few, but but it also comes with like a booklet. They also come with uh, these, so they they got like a lot. So this is the Reman Warbird Scimitar, anyway. Um, so I don't know, they're pretty cool. Um, this is like a little bit more. The high end. That's I was gonna say. That's a fancy that. book you got there. Yeah. So they all they all come with this, and um, I mean, if you look at the, if you look at the uh, the Eagle Moss website, uh, they, you know, they they just have a ton. I, I mean, the most obscure Star Trek ships. That and I and I was never like a huge Star Trek fan. I actually really like this movie, and I like, you know, some of the other ones, but um, you know, I'm not. I wouldn't consider myself a trekkie or anything but i did like this movie i know that hardcore trekkers trekkies whatever are not a lot of them don't like that movie because apparently the director just didn't really stick to like the character supposedly okay didn't really stick rogue eh? like uh how they would actually act but anyway so that's what i got this week very cool um too bad Q wasn't here. He'd be uh, he'd be all over that Star Trek. Oh, is he stuff. a big Star Trek? Oh yeah. Okay, he, I didn't know that. He digs but, it. Yep. All right, all right. So uh, without further ado, let's get to our guest this week. Um, 
He is, this is actually the second time he was on here. Let's, let's get to him first. And, uh, and, we'll, and uh, it is Joseph Johnson, part two, from, well, I should say, the creator of HollywoodDieCast.com. How are you doing, Joe? I'm great. Just hanging out. Now, uh, now you're a busy man because I saw you on a podcast last night or yesterday as well. On here. That's right. I uh, literally had my other cap on and uh, was promoting <laughs> ON TV on another podcast. That's that's my day job. <laughs> uh, now, as I mentioned, we are kind of going backwards as far as you're concerned because. The first time that we had you on here was something that you've more recently started to collect, and that's, uh, as we can see in the background, some of your Hollywood uh, movie props. Uh, but you, well, I mean, I, I, you didn't even start out necessarily collecting diecast, did you? I mean, I know you collected that before you collected the movie props, but that wasn't the initial thing right. that you started out collecting. Well, if we go all the way back to my youth, it all started with Star Wars figures and toys. That's where my collecting bug started. Uh, I still have all my original Star Wars action figures. Um, and then when they re-released them in the 90s, I started collecting all those, and it was pretty much out of control. Um, and But it wasn't I understand. until the early... Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't until the early 2000s where uh, I discovered uh, a couple of diecast car manufacturers were making cars from my favorite TV shows and movies. And so I bought a little display case that held like 30 something cars. And I filled that display case up with some of my favorite Hollywood cars. And when friends saw it, they were like, oh my God, that's awesome. That's fantastic. And and so it kept growing and growing, and the display case got bigger and bigger. And at one point, uh, I decided to create a website because at the time, there wasn't anything out there for collectors like me. So I created this website, HollywoodDieCast.com, and little did I know it would change my life. I started getting emails from all over the world, was invited to be on television programs to talk about Hollywood cars, I've met celebrities, I've met my idols, uh, and it all stemmed from that silly little website. So did you have any type of, uh, of diecast cars as a kid? I mean, did you, did you collect any form of that as a kid or, or no? I wouldn't say I collected them. Uh, I wasn't a Hot Wheels kid or anything like that. Uh, as a kid, my focus was Star Wars. Uh, to quote Bill Murray, nothing but Star Wars. Um, and so that was my that. focus as a kid. And I had some Migos and stuff like that, too, as a kid. But, uh, yeah, Hot Wheels weren't really part of my life as a kid. Uh, okay. Um, Joe, what's the – we were talking earlier. What is the definition of die cast? Does it have to be metal yeah, it has to have a metal component to it. You know, imagine uh, a piece of metal that's stamped in a mold to form the body of the car. Um, and so uh, die cast is basically stamped metal. Um, not all die cast cars have a metal body. Sometimes it'll have a plastic body, but a metal base. Um, but normally die cast cars are expected to have some form of, of metal in there, usually zinc or something like that. And does it have anything to do with the scale or the size of the toy or car? Well, that's one thing is, is, uh, die cast cars can come in a wide variety of scales, but the one that people are most familiar with the hot wheels matchbox, that's one sixty fourth scale, um, they, that's there's smaller versions that like uh ho scale which is your basic model train scale um that's like uh 187 um but then there's 143 uh, and 132 and the largest scale that i collect is 118th scale that where the cars are about a foot long wow. um but there's even cars that are larger than that so the scale is all over the place, but I focus mostly on 164th scale and 118th scale. Cool. 
cool. Now you mentioned that uh, that the display that you originally had was different companies uh, and not Hot Wheels. Were were any of them Hot Wheels? I mean, was Hot Wheels making any type of TV and movie car? Uh, um, there at- were a few. Hot Wheels made a few. Uh, some that come to mind is like the emergency. Uh, truck remember the old emergency tv show Mm -hmm. uh there was a flintstones mobile that hot wheels made um but what got me into that that collecting in the early 2000s was mostly a company called johnny lightning and they were doing a line of cars uh, called hollywood on wheels and they did uh, the back to the future and starsky and hutch and uh a wide variety um there are some vintage pieces that go back earlier uh made by corgi um uh, uh, they were initially out of England, but Corgi did a lot of Hollywood-related stuff uh, back in the 70s. Uh, they did James Bond and stuff like that. Um, and there were some other manufacturers uh, that are considered vintage, too. That was one of the very first and maybe only, because like Joe, I collected mostly Star Wars, but I did have, and I don't even know that what it's called, Joe, but what's that white James Bond car that kind of looks futuristic? The, um, is that the S- the, or the, the go, Lotus, go ahead, Joe. Lotus Esprit. The yeah. Lotus Esprit. Is that what you're talking about? I have I have a couple of vintage uh, pieces here. Um, Denver, tell, I don't know if you can see this. Can you see it? Yeah. Yeah, we can. Um, I, so Denver the can't. Lotus, oh, yeah. There's the Lotus Esprit underwater sub that was made by Corgi. Um, all okay. of these that you see here uh, in this little display are Corgi. So they did. The Batmobile, Man from Uncle, the Monkeys, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Uh, in the bottom right corner, there is Kojak, believe it or not, because uh, kids were demanding the Kojak <laughs> Buick. I assume. Uh, now, when I was growing up, my next door neighbor had like a Batmobile that was a little bit bigger than that, and it I think it shot missiles out of it, and I think it had like a yeah. blade on the front. Was that was that Corgi as well? I yeah. Mean, yeah, they did a larger scale. Um, when I got into collecting these cars, Corgi, the larger Corgi were out of my price range. Uh, those were selling for hundreds of dollars 20 years ago. And uh, today they can sell for 500, 600 or more. So I don't have any of those larger Corgi in my collection. Those are uh, really, really valuable and collectible. Okay. Um, so you mentioned the uh you know kind of kind of starting out but um you originally started hollywood diecast because there was no reference guide for yeah. for all the tv and movie cars that that that's correct yeah yeah that, you know when i was researching trying to find out what was out there there was no one reference to tell me who made what And so I started my website to let people know what cars Corgi made and what cars Hot Wheels made and Johnny Lightning. And um, I did toy around with making sort of a price guide for a while, but that just never quite took off. I I thought you did have that on there. I I thought you did have one. I I did, and I thought I was going to retire because of it. uh, (laughs) Oh, okay. I think I sold about a dozen copies, so that wasn't uh, retirement money. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Um, so you also mentioned in the beginning that you were on uh, some TV shows. Um, one of them that I know that you were on was a documentary, I, I believe, out of the UK. Uh, mm-hmm. Was that the first one that you were involved in? Yeah, yeah. Um, there was a, a production crew out of uh, Ireland who uh, – they were going to do a, uh, their first special was going to be uh, the like, hunt, what was it, like 50 greatest TV cars. And as they were researching the, the TV cars, my website kept popping up. Mm. So the producer reached out to me and said, you know, I keep running into your website. Tell me about it. So I explained it to her. And she said, we're going to be in Tennessee uh, to record the Dukes Fest, uh, the Dukes of Hazard Fest. They said, can you meet us there? And I said, yeah, sure. So I drove down there, got to meet the entire cast of the Dukes of Hazzard. Uh, we went to a little uh, museum, a uh, car museum uh, down there, the Star Car Museum. And that's where the crew interviewed me. And I ended up in a couple of different segments that aired in the UK, was a big hit. So then they followed it up with movies, Greatest Cars. 
And for that one, they flew me out to Hollywood. And uh, I got interviewed um, out in Hollywood, which was really exciting. So, um, and yeah, so it's been stuff like that has happened because of the website and it's just been a lot of fun. Uh, before we, before you start showing us around, um, just, a a guesstimate, I would assume you'd have to make, but, uh, about how many of that scale diecast car would you say you currently have? I know uh, you've sold a lot. It would be difficult to say. Yeah. Yeah. They sort of come and go. Um, I, I could say maybe a couple thousand. I, I really don't know off the top of my head. Okay. Um, as far as the value of the collection, I might be approaching maybe 10 grand or so as far as total value. I've never really sat down and added it up. I have some fairly rare and valuable pieces that I'll show you. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the numbers I have. I mean, it's not, I don't have like a record collection. I know other people out there who've sent me photos of their collection that, that put my collection to shame. Um, so I don't have like a record collection, but I'd say a couple thousand pieces. Uh, is there any, any upcoming cars that we should be looking out for or that you're excited for particularly? Um, well, the, the next big thing, um, well, what's currently really, really popular is the Fast and Furious line. Uh, Hot Wheels keeps cranking out Fast and Furious cars, and they've already announced their next couple waves, which are going to focus, uh, focus heavily on the latest movie, uh, the F9 movie. And uh, no Denver, they haven't done the Rocket <laughs> Fiero yet. Uh, still, still waiting for that. That's How did you know? How did you know he was going to ask that? He can read my mind. <laughs> he knew he I was thinking it on it. Facebook. <laughs> He's like, where's the space car? <laughs> so, uh, spoiler so alert, guys. I have, right not, I have not seen it yet. Uh, <laughs> but I have not seen any of them since, since number three. So, Yeah, I, so I, I, we're I, not ruining it. <laughs> probably, um, probably not. Another, another really hot car that you might want to grab if you can get your hands on it is um, Hot Wheels traditionally does exclusives for the San Diego Comic-Con. And the last two Comic Cons have been canceled, so they've been doing sort of a virtual version. And one of the cars that they announced was a Hot Wheels car dedicated to the very first appearance of the Batmobile in comics, which is basically a, a red convertible. Um, but it was it was the first car that was referred to as the Batmobile in comics. And so Hot Wheels announced that they were doing a San Diego Comic Con exclusive version, and they offered it online. And the morning that it went on sale, I got online to buy it and it was sold out in about five minutes wow. and uh, I missed out on it. So I'm going to have to pay aftermarket prices for it. But um, people are taking pre-orders on it already on eBay and it's selling for close to a hundred dollars a pop. Wow. Uh, now we know you're a big Batman fan, big Batman, Batmobile fan. Uh, the Batman trailer just came out. Uh, what do you think uh, about, without seeing the movie, I mean, with only seeing the trailer, uh, what are your opinions on, on the new Batmobile? Um, it's interesting. I mean, obviously this movie is going to show Batman at a younger age. And so I would imagine a younger Bruce Wayne would have kind of a souped up muscle car, you know, that sort of thing. It looks like it could be a Camaro. It looks like it might be a Mustang. It's kind of hard to pinpoint exactly what make and model this Batmobile is. Um, so when it when they first revealed it, uh, people were sort of skeptical. But if it's if they're telling the story of a young Bruce Wayne, I think this kind of fits his uh, his motivation as a younger Bruce Wayne fighting crime. So uh, Hot Wheels has already released it uh, as a diecast car. I have it in my collection. I picked that and, up. Uh, I picked that up the other day myself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I'm excited. I'm excited. Um, you know, I think Robert Pattinson's a fine actor and uh, I, I'm, I'll be in the seats opening weekend when the movie comes out. Denver, real quick, what are your opinions on the trailer for the new Batman? The, it uh, Batman. Looks good to <laughs> me. And yeah, I'm with Joe. I think the car looks sweet because you got it. If you're going to make another Batman movie, you got to do something different than what preceded it. Right. So, yeah, we don't need any more of the tank, you know, monster, you know, attack versions of the Batmobile. Give us something cooler, you know, like yeah. Joe said, more hot roddy, 
yeah. you know, so I, I'm all for it. But you just see glimpses of it in action, and it's so dark that you can't really make it out well. So I guess I'll just have to reserve uh, <laughs> reserve judgment till the movie comes out. Yeah, I I am I have been a very harsh critic of the DC movies, but um, I am looking forward to that one now, and I am definitely looking forward to Suicide Squad more so because of the director. But but still, I'm hoping that this is DC finally turning the corner a little bit with their with their films but um fingers crossed yep. yeah uh now i you you and i have discussed this before uh for a while there like you were doing your website but it seemed like it, it was few and far between before a especially hot wheels would release any type of tv and movie car now it seems like they're coming out in, in droves um, you know, and they even do the, the specific line dedicated to that. Uh, do you feel that your Hollywood diecast, uh, website had anything to do, do with that? Like maybe letting the, yeah. them know that there is a demand for, for these. Yeah, I, I really do think that I, uh, my website played a role in that. As a matter of fact, uh, there's a website forum uh, called hobby talk. And I used to be pretty active on that website and, uh, someone sent me an email one time and said, hey, Joe, have you been on Hobby Talk lately? Uh, you need to see something. So I went over to Hobby Talk, and a guy who was like the product manager for, I want to say, might have been Auto World is a, a diecast car manufacturer. And he had posted in the forum, uh, he said, you can tell Joe Johnson that he could check this car off of his wish list. Uh, we're <laughs> producing Chris- he said, we're producing Christine. And it was the first version of uh, an official Christine uh, in Diecast uh, 164 scale. And the okay. product manager specifically mentioned me as the, the, the influence. And uh, I, it just blew my mind. And, um, and then the product manager with Johnny Lightning um, sent me a box of prototypes one time. And I didn't recognize a lot of cars that were in the prototypes and I, I said, what, what are some of these cars? And he's like, well, one of them is from one of your favorite shows. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And it turned out one of the cars was from Mythbusters. And he oh. had seen on my website that I mentioned how much I enjoyed Mythbusters. Mm-hmm. So they produced the diecast car. It was kind of unofficial. It was kind of sneaky how they did it. Um, <laughs> but they produced the car. And I don't know if you guys remember this myth where they would drop the drive shaft hoping to hit a pothole which would catapult the car into the air. And uh, so Johnny Lightning did a version of that car because I had mentioned it on my website. So, wow. so yeah, I'm, I'm convinced that my website has uh, had an influence on the, uh, uh, the, the expansion and interest of Hollywood cars. Uh, now, y- you mentioned the, the wish list, and, and that was always uh, – my favorite part of one of my favorite parts of your, of your website, but uh, like currently now, because like I said, it seems like, well, especially hot wheels, but even some of the other companies are, are producing these more frequently. Uh, what is left? I mean, what, what sticks out in your mind of cars that still need to be made? Well, right now I think at the top of my list, I want to see a really nice version of the Rockford files firebird. Um okay. Hot Wheels did release a really terrible version of it. It didn't even remotely resemble the Firebird from the TV show. So I'd like to see somebody grab that license and give us that Firebird. It's one of the most famous cars in television history. Um, A lot of people demand the Wraith. I don't know if you remember the movie, The Wraith with Charlie Charlie Sheen. Sheen. Yeah. Um, Yeah, that original car was on display in Auburn Hills, believe it or not, at the Chrysler Museum. It's not there anymore. The museum closed. Um, but a lot of people would love to see the Wraith uh, produced in diecast version. And shockingly, one car that's never, ever been produced in diecast in any form is the Beverly Hillbillies truck. Really? Um, it's shocking to me that it's been produced as like a plastic toy, mm. but never like a, a collectible diecast car. So I sure would love to see that one produced someday. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's kind of surprising. Seems like back in the back in the day, especially when it was on. 
Maybe there's not enough yeah, exactly. real metal on that original card to count as a, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> as a die cut. <laughs> it's, uh, it's foundation is an Oldsmobile truck uh, that George mm. Barris, who also uh, created the Batmobile, uh, he created the Beverly Hillbillies truck, and he found an old beat-up uh, Oldsmobile sitting uh, on a, like at a feed store or something, and he said that's perfect. And he brought it in and and uh, turned it into the Beverly Hillbillies uh, jalopy. So yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah. If you want to uh, go ahead and start showing us around and uh, show us what you got there. Sure. Go yeah. Ahead. So it all started with this display case. Now the cars are a little different, um, but when I first started collecting them. I bought this display case. I think it might have been off of eBay, and I filled it with all my uh, favorite cars. Uh, today, this display case holds all my animation cars, and one of the most recent ones that just came out is this uh, Steamboat Willie uh, boat mm -hmm. that just came out recently. As a matter of fact, uh, I haven't seen it in stores yet. I bought this one online. Um, but these are all animation cars that I now uh, have filled up my original display. Um, as my display kept growing and growing, I just couldn't find a display to hold everything. So I had to build it myself. And uh, so I built this display case that you see here. Um, along the top, we have Star Trek, Battlestar Galactica, Star Wars, uh, even the Mandalorian. Mm -hmm. um, the top Three rows are all TV cars. Uh, you see Munsters, Batman, Miami Vice. Um, those are all TV cars. And then everything underneath that is uh, movie cars. Um, and as you can see, I, I even ran out of room uh, and had to expand and, and just added additional cases. Um, this is my Batman collection. and. In the bottom right corner, you can see the new Robert Pattinson uh, Batmobile right there. Uh, what's the uh, hazard? Which what do you what that? what what would you say is your favorite Batmobile Batmobile diecast car? Well, they've done? It's it's hard hard to uh, not say the 1966 Batmobile. I mean, I grew up watching that show in reruns. Um, this version that you see here uh, was offered online as a Hot Wheels Red Lines Club exclusive. Uh, it's just absolutely beautiful. So yeah, the, the 66 version has always been my favorite. And I actually got to see the original car uh, from the TV show it was on display in Barris's shop in 2011. And I was left with it unsupervised. And uh, I could have probably <laughs> hopped in, but I didn't want to push my luck, so I didn't climb inside. But I got to pose with it and got uh, some nice pictures with it. Now, you did just post so, a picture of yourself on Facebook in the Bat Boat. How did it, uh, who owns the Bat Boat, and how did it come so, about that you ended up in it? I have a couple of friends who uh, own a, a large collection of full-size TV and movie cars. They have a Batmobile, um, and... Uh, they must have worked out a deal with somebody to build them uh, a bat boat. And so two years ago, my friend said, hey, meet me at this lake. And I showed up and he shows up in the 18 van towing the bat boat, which was surreal. And uh, we went on the lake and we cruised around and we had this model with us. Uh, she was doing a photo shoot. And yeah, I noticed, I noticed that fun days. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah Bat boat and a model, Joe, you must've been in your glory. That's doesn't get much better than that. So. Um, another thing that's really hot right now is uh, the Dukes of Hazzard. Um, when, when uh, Warner brothers announced that they were no longer going to be producing the general Lee, uh, people went nuts and started buying up all the Dukes of Hazzard stuff they could get. Uh, most of these cars that you see here are made by Johnny Lightning and are worth a small fortune. Um, this pickup truck that you see there, or this tow truck, uh, is worth several hundred dollars on eBay uh, in its original packaging. Um, wow. It's pretty crazy. The, the values have just skyrocketed. So, I'll, um, I'll, I'll, and then I, so most of those were just available at like your regular regular store? Yeah. Like, Okay. Yeah, that's what's crazy is it doesn't seem like it was that long ago where you could buy these cars at Target or Meyer or Walmart, mm -hmm. and just a few years later they're worth hundreds of dollars. It's crazy. Yeah. So 
Now, do you? And then I mentioned. Uh, oh, go ahead. Well, I was just wondering: Do you buy multiples so that you can open and display, and then keep one for uh, that's in the packaging, or how do you normally do and it? And then five yeah, to sell. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't want. I don't consider myself a scalper because I I don't make a living selling diecast cars. But if I see something I like, I will buy multiples and I put some away. And uh, I might open one for this display. And if it has cool artwork, I might keep it in its package. And if they become really super valuable, then some of them will go up on eBay. And uh, yeah, I've, I've made some nice money on, on some of the cars. Uh, it's crazy. Um, just like sports cards right now and other collectibles, uh, the diecast collecting field has blown up. And uh, there are lots of cars worth a lot of money right now. Yeah, I was, so, just, I was I, just telling Denver about the uh, the show that we went to in um, in Taylor, yeah, uh, and just how how packed that was. Yeah. Um, now I mentioned uh, Fast and Furious, uh, really really hot right now, and I just completed this display. I bought this display case that holds sixty five cars. Um, the top couple rows are uh, the first Fast and Furious movie. And goes down to Too Fast, Too Furious, and all the way down to Fast and Furious 9 right there. Um, so, yeah, 65 cars uh, completely full of Fast and Furious vehicles. Now, is there a Hobbs and Shaw car? You know, I'm not a huge fan of Hobbs and Shaw, and, and honestly, I don't know if they've made any diecast cars from Hobbs and Shaw yet, but I'm, I'm sure we'll see them eventually. But I do have from uh, Fast and Furious 7, I wanted to include uh, Deckard Shaw's uh, Aston Martin. Um, uh, what is it? Uh, is his, he drove an Aston Martin in, in number seven. Remember him and uh, him and Dom crashed into each other on the rooftop? Oh, yeah. So uh, I wanted to make sure to have him represented. Uh, this is made by a Japanese manufacturer called Kyosho. This isn't available from Hot Wheels or anything. And another one that um, Hot Wheels hasn't made, I had to go to Hong Kong to pick this up, but that's Han's car from Tokyo Drift. And it made a appearance in flashbacks in some of the other Fast and Furious movies. Um, you didn't, you didn't is, have to go uh, all the way to Hong Kong yourself, did you? No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm I kidding. It, okay. <laughs> uh, from a seller uh, in Hong Kong and it took a couple weeks to get here. Um, but it was made by a, a company called Pico and uh, this is the only version that exists right now. I don't know if Hot Wheels is able to get the license to it. Uh, so I had to, had to go to great lengths to add that to my collection. Now, are there like, uh, not that those are bootleg, but are, is there like a bootleg or modded community for Hot Wheels and diecast? Uh, some people like to customize cars that have never been made. Um, but one interesting thing is, some diecast car companies like Johnny Lightning and Greenlight, if they don't want to pay the license for a, a franchise like Fast and Furious, sometimes they'll just release cars that resemble the car in a lot of ways. And so people will buy them as like a Fast and Furious car, but they don't have to pay the licensing fees. So uh, I collect those as well. So, cool. Um, over here is uh, my Pixar uh, cars collection. I decided to fill this display case with all of the race cars that appear in the first Cars movie. Um, the race was called the, the Speedway of the South. And uh, it has a whole bunch of different race cars in that. Um, I, was, uh, I was collecting all the Pixar cars for a while and they got to be so valuable. I ended up selling them off and making a fortune wow. um but these these are the ones i ended up uh keeping for myself but yeah now, these these diecast pixar cars were hot for a while now I, I would buy some of those original series ones uh sporadically i think i still have now in my mind the the jeep was it named was it named sarge or something uh, yeah, yeah the military jeep yeah. didn't like the original one get recalled because of lead paint or something yeah, yeah. I wonder yeah, what that's that, going that for now, because I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure I have that one. Don't yeah, don't, I'm not don't put sure. it in your mouth. I haven't yeah, looked up. I don't. Oh. 
but there are a few pieces that go for hundreds of dollars. Um, there's a race wrecked version of uh, number 33 here. He's called Mood Springs. And Mattel did a race wrecked version of him. And in or out of the package, he would he sells for a few hundred dollars. Wow. Um, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. Wow. So um, now this you display case. Uh, oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. All right. So this display case, I have some sci fi stuff in here, some Star Wars stuff. Uh, a lot of these were available at the Disney store. Um, NECA uh, did a series called Cinema Machines or Cinema Scenes. They did an alien line, and uh, those are pretty valuable right now. Um, kind of a sub-genre of my collection are autograph pieces. Uh, over the years, I've had pieces signed by celebrities, uh, and that's kind of grown. That just was never a, a, intentional. It just sort of happened. So there's a couple of pieces here signed by some of the Brady Bunch kids. Um, there's uh, Michael Rooker signed uh, a Guardians of the Galaxy ship. Nice. Um, Barbara Eden signed this uh, I Dream a Genie car. Shirley Jones signed the Partridge family bus. Uh, one of the jewels of my collection is William Shatner's signature on this uh, Star Trek Enterprise. Um, nice. And I have a few more I'll show you in a little bit, but that's been a lot of fun getting celebrities to sign uh, these diecast cars. Now you've mentioned before um, too. A lot of times when you go to have them sign it, they they act like they've never even seen seen like the vehicles. Yeah, right? yeah. A lot of them are surprised to see them. Uh, Barbara Eden, when I when I showed her the car to sign, she just lost her mind, <laughs> and she's like, "I've never seen this before." And I was going to try and get her one and, and send it to her, but they were selling for a little little bit of scratch on eBay, so I, oh. I never got around to doing it. But I'd, I'd still like to get one in her hand someday. But, yeah, a lot of times they've, they've never seen these before. They're not in on the licensing deal. So. Right, yeah. Yeah. One of the uh, more rare and valuable pieces of my collection is this one right here. I don't know if you can see the top of it. It says, Welcome Back, Cotter. mm -hmm. uh, this is an unproduced prototype of a of James Buchanan High School 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 bus, and it was going to be part of a Matchbox line called Star Cars, um, and they mocked up some prototypes, and then the line got canceled, and um, and so there were only a handful of prototypes in the world, and, and this is one of them. Wow. And uh, I paid two hundred for it at the time. Uh, I don't know what it's worth today, but um, yeah, it's one of the only ones in the world. Nice. Uh, yeah. Now, you know, going back to what Denver asked you about, like the the bootleg thing, um, isn't there like? Uh, I mean, I don't know if it'd be considered a bootleg, but the Pink Panther car is isn't that oh, yeah. one of them that's never officially been produced, or am I wrong? Yeah, this has never been produced in diecast form. Uh, there was like a SSP okay. racer and stuff like that. Um, but there was a guy in England who was a fan of my site at the time, and he had a machine shop, and he had made this metal uh, Pink Panther mobile at his machine shop and added Hot Wheels wheels to it. And uh, he said, hey, what's your mailing address? And I gave it to him, and this showed up in my mailbox. Wow, And I just couldn't believe it. And yeah. the cool thing was, is when I posted pictures of this on my website, the guy who created the Pink Panther mobile contacted me and asked if I could put him in touch with the guy in England <laughs> because he wanted one for himself. Oh, really? And yeah. The, cool. yeah. Wow. And so the guy in England like lost his mind, like, oh, my God, I can't believe I'm, I'm sending the guy who created the Pink Panther mobile yeah. uh, one of his creations. So. That so there's cool. only a handful of these that exist in the world too. And it's one of my favorite pieces. I would never part with it. Yeah, that's cool. What's the most so, you've ever paid for a uh, single die cast? That welcome back Cotter school bus, uh, I think is my upper limit, uh, 200. Uh, I've come close for some of the larger scale cars, but, uh, 200, I think is the most I ever paid. Yeah. And then uh, speaking of autographs, um, here are a couple of cars signed by uh, Bowen Luke Duke from the Dukes of Hazard, John Schneider on the left, Tom Opat on the right. 
Um, below that, I got, I've had this Roscoe uh, autograph since 1981. Uh, I can't believe wow. it survived all these years. Where'd you get that? Um, Autorama or something? Uh, yeah, that exactly right. That was Autorama back in 1981. <laughs> and, uh, nice. and then I have this little media pass. It's signed by Catherine Bach and, uh, and um, uh, Sonny Schroyer, who played Enos. So cool. more of my uh, autograph collection. And then over here, you mentioned Batman earlier. This is my Batman wall. Um, over here in this main display case are uh, all the Hot Wheels Batmobiles uh, that have been made since uh, about 2006, 2005, something like that. Um, every single one of these is a Hot Wheels Batmobile in a color variation or wheel variation. Wow. Uh, so there are over 100 in this display case. And then I have sort of an overflow display case over here. So, yeah, so since 2005 or so, Hot Wheels has produced well over 100 different uh, Batmobiles. And I, I keep We're, trying to stay up to date on them. Was Hot Wheels making other Batmobiles before they came out with the 1966 Batmobile? I, I, just, I don't yeah. remember. I remember it was a big deal when they finally came out with the 66 Batmobile, but I couldn't remember if they were making some before that or not. Yeah, when they got the Batman license, they were producing figures too. And uh, the very first Batmobile they produced was sort of a unique creation for Mattel Toys. Um, so that came out first. Mm. And, um, and they did some variations of that. And then I think it was 2007 is when they announced that they were doing the uh, 66 Batmobile. And that was awesome because the 66 Batmobile hadn't been made since Corgi did it back in the early seventies, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, so when Hot Wheels got the license, it was just awesome. And once they got the license, they produced it in a variety of scales. Um, here's one that's signed by George Barris. Uh, here's a little, little teeny one that's uh, uh, HO scale 187. Uh, there's a 118th uh, Batmobile. Um, and then they released other figures and toys and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, it's just been uh, a glut of uh, Batmobiles when uh, Mattel announced that they had gotten the license. Now that the license for action figures has gone to McFarland's, uh, McFarland Toys, is that going to affect, affect Hot Wheels at all? I don't think so. Um, because Mc, McFarlane, I don't believe, is producing die-cast cars. No. Uh, they're producing action figures and play sets, and they are releasing a Batmobile, but it's going to be a plastic uh, Batmobile. Okay. So I think they're, they're, those are, they're not competing with each other. Those are two completely different things. Okay. All right. So, so then, um, as my collection started to grow, I, I wanted to create sort of a museum-quality display and I got really lucky. Um, a Hallmark was going out, of uh, going out of business, and they were selling display cases for $35 each. And so wow. I bought several display cases and set it up here in my living room wow. and allowed me to display my, my collection, uh, like museum quality. Mm -hmm. uh, so here on the end cap, we got Ghostbusters, uh, Smoking the Bandit, and... If you notice here in the center, I have a Smoking the Bandit car signed by Burt Reynolds mm -hmm. uh, when I attended his movie premiere back in, I think it was 2018. Um, that's, that's one of the gems in my collection to have something signed by Burt Reynolds. Uh, and then I have a huge Back to the Future display. Down here, you'll see Grease. And then on this side of the display case, we have... Um, Mostly movie cars. There's some Batmobiles here. Gone in 60 seconds. Fast and Furious. Down here at the bottom is, uh, is uh, American Graffiti. And then we have um, Ferris Bueller, Tommy Boy, Herbie the Love Bug, Blues Brothers, Animal House, John Wick, Christine. We got the Bullet Cars. This is one of my favorites, the uh, family truckster <laughs> from uh, Vacation. Yeah, we have Austin Powers. This just recently came out. It's not um, it's not diecast, but it mm. 
it fits into my collection. This is the Jurassic Park Ford Explorer. Okay. Uh, this Jeep over here is die cast. I'm hoping they're going to follow up with the die cast Ford Explorer. Mm -hmm. We have Mad Max. Um, just picked up this fairly recently. That's Stunman Mike's uh, Nova from Death Proof. Did uh, the Challenger? Who who, who uh, produced that? The the Death Proof. Uh, it's a, con a company called uh, AMP uh, did a die cast version. It even has the the little rubber duck hood ornament, which oh, is okay. really really cool. Yeah. Yeah, I think I have the unofficial version that they made, the smaller version. There might have been that right next to it that you had there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Johnny Lightning. And then on this side is um, mostly TV-related cars. There's a 66 Batmobile along with the movie Batmobile. Got some James Bond stuff. Denver, there's your, uh, your Lotus Esprit submarine. Nice. We have the... Munsters down here. I just recently met uh, Butch Patrick, who played Eddie Munster, and had him sign one of my uh, diecast Munster cars. Again, Dukes of Hazard is again worth a small fortune here. <laughs> and then uh, we got A Team, Starsky and Hutch, Miami Vice. This is uh, one of the newest additions to my uh, collection. These cars were made. Um, by a company, I can't even remember their name, but they got the license to do the Miami Vice Ferraris. And honestly, I don't even know if they're licensed as Miami Vice. I think they just got the Ferrari license and produce these cars. Okay. And then we got the Monkees, Green Hornet, Speed Racer, Knight Rider. Um, this is one of the more valuable pieces in my collection is the, uh, the Magnum PI Ferrari. Um, Hot Wheels got the license to do Ferrari cars for a very limited time, and they produced this Magnum PI Ferrari, and then they lost the license. And so in its packaging, that car can sell for up to about $500, and even lose wow. it be worth several hundred dollars. Wow. And even the Hot Wheels that you see, the little, the little ones in the back there, those are worth a small fortune, too. Uh, the Ferrari regularly sells on eBay for about $150. Wow. And then we got a couple of animated uh, Scooby-Doo, Flintstones. And this was a long time coming. The uh, the uh, Sanford and Son pickup mm -hmm. truck uh, has been released in 118th scale. I was really happy to see that. Nice. So well, that's uh, a bulk of my collection. Okay. And uh, just now, now Denver really happy to show it off. Now Denver said that he had brought something. Well, yeah, uh, the, it'll be kind of anticlimactic, but <laughs> oh, okay. it, it was more of a here. I'll I'll pass it over. You can can Joe see? Uh... Yeah, I can see you. Uh, Someone uh, very uh, special gave that to me. Ah, yeah. It is the Beatles. I believe the I have. I believe I have one yeah. of these too. Um, and I, and I never really collected diecast vehicles either, but because of Joe's website, uh, you know, he'd get me excited about stuff coming out because he was so excited about it. So then, you know, I'll still pick up a lot every now and then. But, uh, but yeah, that's that's cool. So that came out in 2016. Um, yeah, that's is that the really only... one of my only Hot Wheels, uh, but I have it right on my desk at home for when I'm working, <laughs> so I look at it every day. And Is that the only Beatles vehicle that they did, Joe? Hot Wheels, yeah. Um, they also did another version of that one that has a big smile on the face. It's just kind of a very uh, variation of it. Okay. Um, but there are larger scale uh, Beatles vehicles that you can find that are based on their songs and stuff like that. Well, so, so uh, I mean, you showed us a couple, but specifically, what do you think would be the most valuable diecast car in your collection? Um, probably that Magnum PI Ferrari. Okay. Um, if I were to sell that, I could never replace it. Um, so I would never part with it, but yeah, in its original packaging, it can sell up to $500. Wow. Um, this green Hornet black beauty that actually retailed for $200. Um, I got it for a little bit less than that. I, I think it was on sale when I bought it. Um, but brand new that, that green Hornet black beauty retailed for $200. So yeah, like I said, you know, if I was to um, put a value on all this, it would probably be around the $10,000 range. 
I actually have a, uh, here, let me uh, flip my camera here. Um, I actually have a, uh, a near complete set of Hot Wheels retro entertainment cars. Uh, they're all in the original packaging. I have them in a plastic tub. And some of those cars individually can sell for a hundred, hundred fifty dollars. Really? And I have over a hundred in my tub. <laughs> so I do. I do the math on those. that. Yeah. Yeah. So on average, they sell probably for twenty, twenty-five dollars. But there are some that sell for fifty. There's some that sell for a hundred or more. And so, like I said, there's over a hundred in that tub. So you do the math on that. Just yeah. that tub alone yeah. could sell for. $2,500 to 5,000, depending, you know, if I was wow. to auction them off or whatever. Yeah. So, so that collection is enormously valuable. That's, uh, I'm, I'm amazed at how the value has skyrocketed. I got a question for both of you guys. Uh, what is the greatest television only car, not necessarily diecast, but just what is the greatest television car of all time in Denver? You can go first on this one. Ooh, <clears throat> That's a toughie. Oh, Lord. Uh, you know, for some reason, my mind goes to animation, maybe because I watched it more as a kid. Um, you know, but I'm thinking as goofy as the sounds, you know, like maybe the mystery machine, just because of the kind of the outlandish design and how integral it was to the show. Right. And, uh, you know, that's just me being a Scooby-Doo fan. Um to be honest, I hadn't put that much thought into it. Had I <laughs> had I known uh, I was going to be hit with some gotcha questions, I would have prepared. But uh... <laughs> but before we get to Joe, that's a good segue into a plug that I have to do. Uh, this weekend, this Saturday at uh, the Dort Federal, I think it's just called the Dort Federal, Federal Arena, the old IMA Arena in Flint, it is going to be the really cool Comic Con, and I am going to be there selling some stuff. I probably, I'll, I might have a few diecast cars. I don't know, but uh, Corin Nemec from uh, Parker Lewis can't lose and Mansquito is oh, going to wow. be there, uh, and, and Rotten Tail, which was a locally Tail. produced okay. movie. Okay, that he was well in. he's in town because he's he's uh, filming another movie, and oh. I, I don't remember the name of it, but that's what he's doing. I guess they're going to be even casting. They're they're going to be talking to people at the Comic Con casting for this movie. Sweet. Um, and also, uh, the Brooklyn Brawler Steve Lombardi, aka Abe Knuckleball Schwartz, aka the original MVP in WWF, is going to be there. And I believe my table is going to be right next to him. So uh, come check it out. I believe it is well pre sale or twelve dollars. I think it's uh, fifteen dollars at the door. Um, but uh, I think it's like from nine to six. So check that out. Joe, what is the greatest television car of all time? Well, that TV show that I was on that was filmed for the UK audience, uh, they voted on their favorite uh, TV cars of all time. And a little bit to my surprise, the winner of that poll was the General Lee from the Dukes of Hazard, oh. which surprised me coming from UK residents. Um Personally, my number one hands down is the Batmobile, mm -hmm. uh, the 66 Batmobile. Um, I mean, right up there, you know, might include the Monkey Mobile, which I love. And, and the original Monkey Mobile resides here in Michigan. Um, but if I have to pick one, it would be the 66 Batmobile. You guys are both wrong. The answer is Wonderbug. Wonder. Oh, come Bug. on. <laughs> Wait, what the hell's Wonderbug? I love me some Wonderbug, <laughs> but come on. It was a Sid and Marty Croft uh, oh, show. Oh, gotcha. They, you had Schlepp Car, and then he'd get the magic horn, and then he'd... Well, you know what I almost like... said, but I couldn't remember the name of it, but what was the uh, that dune buggy, the talking dune buggy? Speed buggy. Speed buggy, yeah. Yeah, that, I used was, to, that was pretty similar to, to Wonderbug. I used to love Speed buggy. I almost said that. But. Yeah. Wonderbug was live action, but it was pretty similar. Uh Okay, so I would love to get some Wonderbug diecast. That would be awesome. I have or had a Wonderbug board game. That's probably why why I have such fond memories wow. of it. But uh, <laughs> so uh, this might be the last question of the day. Uh, you guys could probably guess what it is. Uh, what is the greatest movie car of all time, Denver? You go first. Dang. See, I would kind of maybe flip the script a little bit. Uh, and say that the 
Tim Burton Batmobile might be, again, I hate to say best. It's, I would say it's more my favorite just because I had only ever in my mind thought of the Batmobile as the 66 TV version. Yeah. So when, uh, you know, the, the, what was the 88, 89 Batman came out and it was just so different and the design was, you know, so kind of out there in a lot of ways that really blew my mind. Like, I don't think, uh, my mind's been blown as, at least as far as a car goes, you know? Right. Um, so I might have to say that, I mean, even though, you know, for practical purposes, I don't think that would be a very good Batmobile, but just yeah. coolness factor. Uh, okay. I haven't had a yeah, movie guess, going yeah. experience that's been as right. that much of a wow factor. Joe, what do you say? Wow. No, that's a tough question. I've obviously put some thought into it, but let me show you something here. Um, I have a display here that is dedicated exclusively to Back to the Future, and I'm going to have to go with the Back to the Future DeLorean time machine. Uh, a really close second would be the uh, Aston Martin from, uh, from Goldfinger. But I, I really got to go with the uh, with the DeLorean time machine. All right, Tim, what's the right answer? Uh, okay, I, I don't, I'm not going to say there's a right or wrong <laughs> answer to this one. But uh, but my personal favorite, just off the top of my head, because honestly, I really didn't didn't think about it myself. I was just going to ask you guys. But I my favorite would probably be the Interceptor, the Mad Max Interceptor. Yeah, uh, that's a that's a good one. So. Uh, yeah, that's that's pretty. That ranks pretty high. Yeah. That is cool. Okay, uh, okay, Joe, I think we're uh, just about out of time. So thank you very much once again for being here, Joe Johnson, Part 2. Uh, anything that uh, you want to say before, we, before you depart? Well, if uh, the viewers out there, if you're interested in this sort of thing, I have a Facebook page now. Uh, it's the Hollywood Diecast Facebook page. Uh, search it. It's a lot of fun, a lot of interaction. Uh, I post a lot and people ask questions and comment and uh, it's fun interacting with people who have this similar interest. So um, come find me on Hollywood Diecast on Facebook. And I'm going to I'm going to give you a little sneak here, a little sneak peek. I have been thinking about possibly launching the website again okay. uh, next uh, in 2023 would be the 20th anniversary of my website launching. Oh, wow. And so I might do something in conjunction with the 20th anniversary of Hollywood Diecast. Okay, awesome. An exclusive here. When when did you collection right. reflection? When is your Thank apartment you. open for tours so people can come <laughs> yeah. through? <laughs> uh, yeah, don't give out my address or anything <laughs> like that because, uh, I'll wake up one day and it'll all be gone. <laughs> All right, Joe, take it easy, and thanks again. And Denver, uh, thank you once again oh, it's my for pleasure. being here. Oh, yeah, um, good time. And uh, I'm sure we will be seeing you in the future. Do you? Would you like to say anything? Um, I mean, uh, can we talk about what's Yeah, what's yeah, upcoming? we uh, – uh, Comic Experience Sci-Fi, we took almost like a year and a half break just because of all the conventions being closed for – Yeah for COVID, but last weekend we were out at Motor City Nightmares in Novi, I believe, mm -hmm. and uh, we shot some new stuff and we've kind of been shooting off and on for the last couple of months, So, but we're really gonna ramp it up with uh, okay. with all the c Comic Cons coming back over the fall. So, yeah. right. um, awesome. and then we hope end of the year, beginning of the next year to, you know, get back on TV, at least have some new episodes, so. All right, um, awesome. So yeah, just follow Comic Experience Sci-Fi, and we'll keep everybody up to date on uh, what's going on. All right, and uh, like I said, just one more cheap plug because I think I forgot to mention this. I said it was a segue, but I forgot to mention it even that there is going to be a mystery machine at the uh, really cool Comic Con this Saturday, along Ooh. with Jurassic Park vehicles and maybe some other ones. I'm not 100 percent sure. I know that there's going to be a cantina scene from Star Wars where you can shoot Greedo and get your That's picture taken cool. there. So um, look that up. Really cool Comic Con. Um, definitely check out the Comics Beer and Sci Fi page 
and check out Hollywood Diecast as well. And uh, we will see everyone the next time. Thank you for watching Collection Reflection.